Hello, Mayday family. My name is May and I am a licensed counselor with the YouTube channel. So what is the difference between ghosting and no contact? Usually when I hear about ghosting and we talk about ghosting, that involves individuals that might be dating or seeing someone or talking to someone and all of a sudden they fall off the face of the earth. Uh, this actually happens a lot more now nowadays, especially with our younger population. Uh, it seems like instead of having to go through an, uncom un an uncomfortable conversation, our younger population is choosing more and more to just kind of disappear uh, without saying anything. And so that is what would be uh, defined as ghosting when you ghost someone like a ghost and versus no contact. No contact is making the conscious decision to no longer interact or have any form of interaction with an individual um, after a breakup or a separation um, has occurred, right? And usually we think about these things in the form of relationships, if you're in a romantic relationship with someone. But the truth of the matter is this applies to any type of relationship that you're in. For example, family relationships. And that's what we'll be focusing on uh, in this video is how these terms apply when it comes to relationships within family units and uh, family dynamics. So uh, let's see, I'm sorry, you guys, like the lighting is a little bright, in my opinion, a little too bright, but that's okay. So when it comes to talking about families and ghosting, what does that typically looks like, look like? So typically, if you ghost a family member, that means you all of a sudden stopped reaching out to them when they reach out to you you are not responsive, you're not saying anything to them, um, you're standoffish maybe, and if they ask you what's going on, you don't really answer. Uh, so that's what that would look like within a family dynamic and family interaction. What no contact would look like is you literally just cut them off completely. And what we call that especially, uh, well, mainly within the field of uh, counseling and psychology is emotional cutoff, right? So what, what's happening there is you emotionally cut off the other person. And that tends to happen very often within family dynamics and family members. So when you emotionally cut off the other person, typically that comes with no longer talking to them, no longer reaching out to them, no longer speaking to them, no longer being around them. Anything that has to do with them, it's like you just completely cut them off and you try to go back and act like they never even existed. Well, not always. You don't always, the individual doesn't always try to go back and act like they never existed. Sometimes they'll just try to process through the fact that they just went through something traumatic to them uh, while no longer having to deal with that other individual. So those are the differences. Now, when I think about these two things, they're actually very similar. It's almost, they're almost identical, right? Uh, with the only difference being that when you ghost someone and just kind of disappear, typically everything seems like it's going okay right? At least from the other person's perspective. Everything seems like it's going okay. Everything seems like it's fine. It's great. And then all of a sudden you just disappear. And the other person is left wondering what is happening or what happens. And so we're going to get into talking about the psychological damage that that, that, that actually does um, to the other person. So that's the key point with ghosting is that typically the person that gets ghosted is either thinking everything is going okay, everything is going well, or has high hopes for everything 
you know, improving and uh, continuing to move forward. So even if you're not necessarily super close, they might feel like, oh, I like this person. Oh, we have these conversations. It's probably going to keep going. And all of a sudden you drop off the face of the earth, the face of the earth. That is the, at the core of ghosting. That's at the core of ghosting. When it comes to no contact, typically something has already went wrong. You know, something has already went wrong, has already put significant stress on that relationship. And so that individual has decided consciously and very deliberately to no longer answer any calls, answer any text messages, or have any contact with that individual. We cut them off completely and we do an emotional cutoff as well with that. So with that being said, you can see that when it comes to talk, when we talk about cut off, typically we're referring to uh, a situation where both parties are aware of the downfall of the situation and the relationship and what's been happening. So it's not as much of a shock when the other person decides to no longer respond. <laughs> so that is the main difference, right? And this is not really talked about. Ghosting is something that is, it's not really been around for a long time. I think with, with, with technology, now it's become a real problem. I mean, kids are out there dating or young people are out there dating and, and just ghosting each other off the face of the earth without, you know, um, giving an explanation or a conversation or anything like that. So let's go into the psychological impact that, 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 that each one of these things has, right? So with ghosting, the person that gets ghosted, it actually does so much damage psychologically. And I wanted to make a video about this because I want as many people to avoid doing ghosting as much as possible. I'm in favor of no contact. I am not in favor of ghosting. Ghosting is just rude and it's quite frankly cowardly. At the base of ghosting, it's a coward's move, right? So people that ghost other people are just cowards. They're not, they're, they're not equipped to have grown-up conversations or uncomfortable conversations or um, express themselves in being honest and true to themselves as well as to the people that they might be seeing or talking to. So within a family dynamic, right, it's the same thing. If you just ghost someone and everything, you know, you, you ghost your mom or your dad or your, your sister and everything, or brother, and everything seemed like it was going fine, but you just like stop responding and things like that. That was, that is a cowardly move because they don't know what the heck is going on with you, right? So on the part of the ghoster, I want the person getting ghosted to understand what's happening from the part of the ghoster and know that when someone ghosts you, it's that person's problem. It's because that person isn't equipped with the necessary skill sets to have a conversation with you. They are not on that level. And so it's not you, it's them. And most of the time, most of the time, the reasons why they're ghosting you are not going to be reasons that you are responsible most of the time, right? So the person doing the ghosting is really just coming from a cowardly place. There are just cowards that are looking for an easy way out because they haven't been taught properly on how to express themselves, how to have conversations and how to be open to themselves as well as to other people. And so they pull that, that cowardly move on you. And it's the same thing with family dynamics, right? So if you are in conflict with your brother, your mom, your sister, your cousin, you want to make sure to have a conversation with them first. Make sure the other person knows that there is a problem and that you're not just having a problem imagining 
that the other person knows that there's also a problem. You need to make that very, very clear. And hey, there's a problem and this is what the problem is, right? So when a person goes to you on the receiving end, that oftentimes leaves the person that just got ghosted feeling very insecure, feeling very confused, feeling very frustrated and almost pushes them to a point of desperation because now they're wanting answers. They wanna find out what happened, what's going on, what can I do to fix it? Is it me? What's wrong with me? And so you are psychologically damaging this individual for the long term, most of the time. And so on the receiving end, that is the type of damage you're doing to another human being when you decide to ghost them, right? So that's why I'm not in favor of ghosting. I don't, I don't understand it. I, I have been the recipient of it more than once, right? And so I know or understand how that can feel. And so I just encourage it on all levels. I think it is unhealthy for both parties because typically the person doing the ghosting is insecure. They don't know how to communicate and they're just not in a good place in life in general. And the person getting ghosted is now getting um, psychologically damaged and psychologically traumatized by this experience, right? And losing sleep most of the time, right? So when it comes to ghosting, please don't do it. Um, it just leaves too much of a core impact in the individual's core being and psychological and mental health to where it's just not worth it. And the problem is today's generation have, haven't really been brought up with the essential social skill set necessary to navigate healthily within other within each other and with other human beings. That is a core, that's a true core problem, and that just you know that that stems highly from the fact that you know with technology coming into play it's made it easier for people to be cowards when it comes to these type of things, right? So please don't do it. Emotional cut off, on the other hand, is a lot healthier. So when you emotionally cut someone off, typically you have had that conversation. The other person knows there's a problem and knows what the problem is. You know there's a problem. You know what the problem is. And you've tried to fix it. And it's not working. You find, you're finding that by fixing it, you're just keeping yourself in an unhealthy situation, both mentally and potentially physically as well. And so you consciously decide, I'm no longer going to speak to this individual. I'm going to cut them off completely and emotionally cut them off. So if you're having issues with your mom, dad, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, right? And you've talked to them, You've told them there's an issue. You both know what the issue is and you try to resolve it. It's not working. Then you decide, hey, like, I'm just not going to talk to this individual anymore. The other person isn't, isn't going to be confused about why you're doing that. You're not ghosting them. You're, you're cutting them off you're, and you're emotionally cutting them off. And that tends to be healthier for you and for the other person involved. Because once you've tried to fix something, once you know there's an issue and you've tried and it's not working, it's not working, then that means that you're constantly putting yourself in this stressful environment, stressful situation, and it makes you all that much less productive and effective uh, on a daily basis. So by taking that unhealthy element out of your life, now you get to focus more on yourself on what you have going on and you get to uh, quite frankly sleep better at night over time most of the time right so when it comes to relationships especially family relationships i always advise people to be very careful if they're going to cut someone off because that those are family members so we want to make sure that we've exhausted all resources 
before actually cutting that person off completely. And typically with family members, what happens is you might cut them off for a number of years, and then eventually at some point, you'll end up interacting with them again, right? So it's not necessarily the worst of the worst, but if it comes down to choosing uh, a high level of stress and anxiety continuously on a daily basis and cutting that individual off, sometimes it is the best decision to completely cut off. So that gives you time as the person who has been cut off and as the person that's doing the cut off to heal, to heal from all the negative, to heal from all um, the stress and anxiety that has been coming from this relationship and from this particular, whatever situation it, it may be. And that's the key difference. With ghosting, there's no healing going on, right? There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it, right? Other than the fact that the person that ghosted you is just cowardly, right? And it's, not, it's doing nothing but leaving damage, right? Leaving damage, leaving damage. And I would say if you are someone that has gotten ghosted or um, by a family member in a, in a romantic relationship, whatever it may be, count your blessings because this is showing you that this individual is lacking in very fundamental areas when it comes to um, any type of relationship. This, the individual that does the ghosting is not able to communicate. That is fundamental to any relationship. So if they ghost you and you have no idea why, just move on. Because long-term relationships do not just happen, right? It takes hard work and a lot of communication. And if you want a relationship that's going to be long-term, it's going to work, you're both going to have to get really good at communicating. And if this person ghosted you, they're not good at communicating. They're, not, they're, they're nowhere on that level. Let them go. It's not worth it. You just got blessed, really. But when it comes to cut off, cutting someone off, you're taking time to heal. You're taking time to recover, to process, you know. And typically, after a while, there's a good chance that you'll decide to go back in, test the waters, see what's going on, you know. And you won't have to sweep that situation under the rug because you've took, taken time to process through it. You'll be able to bring it up and, and maybe find some type of closure with that particular situation. So that is the difference between ghosting someone and cut off. So cut off is actually a positive thing. For example, if you're dating a narcissist, cut off is the most effective way of dealing with a narcissist, right? Because you're you're cutting off their oxygen supply, you're cutting them, you're cutting off their reservoir, their power reservoir, and you're 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 basically pushing them out of your life. Because you, as the recipient of that, it's a very unhealthy situation for you to be in. And not only that, very stressful and anxiety ridden, right? So you want to push that out of your life. So that's a good example of cut off, right? So the, 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 those are the differences between those two. And I want to definitely encourage anyone watching this to not be a participant in ghosting. And if you get ghosted, count your blessings because that person is not, not it. Even if it's a family member, even with family members, if they're not able to communicate with you, you don't know what's happening and they just kind of cut, completely cut you off, then that is not your problem that's a problem with them they're gonna have to deal with that problem there's nothing you can do to help them with that all right well thank you guys for joining me today and if you find, found this video at, at all helpful go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the like button for the youtube algorithm as well i will talk to you guys later Bye bye